Hey everybody, Tim here, and back to uh, some more YouTube videos for you. Today we are talking about note reading again. I know we talked about it long, long ago when I first started making YouTube videos. One of the first couple of videos I made was how to read music, but this time we're going to talk a little bit, a lot more actually, about ledger lines. So let's just get started, see what we have, and I'll show you uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, now let me bring this up uh, really quick. Make sure everything is centered and all right. So I will post a link to this. If I forget, please let me know. Um, so we've learned how to read music on the staff. At least you should by now. Um, I recommend you watch this video after you've seen maybe the first five to ten um, piano lesson videos that I've made in the past, uh, the Learn to Play Piano series. So uh, we've learned how to read music on the staff, and we've had some practice with that. Um, now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to read the notes that are not on the staff and we need these things called ledger lines. As you can see here the C has its own ledger line. Let me see how big I can make this. Okay, um, so we have um, our ledger lines. So what ledger lines are for is to keep track of where the note is off the staff. kind of said that already. But um, you can have more than one ledger line, and basically what it is is you're extending the staff either down or up um, to account for notes that just don't fit on the staff. So we have E here, right, our bottom line. So there's no ledger lines involved yet. I just wanted to start at E in the treble clef to show you something. Um, so there's E, and then there's actually a space right below that line. That's a space. And that is right before E in the alphabet, also known as D. So if this E is right here, um, this C, sorry, is right here on the piano, this D must be right next to it um, down that way. So the further down um, a note goes on the staff, the further down that way um, it's going to be. And then you have middle C. We kind of know that one already. It's the one on the first ledger line below the treble clef. Um, it's also on the first ledger line above the bass clef, um, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So we have E, D, C, and then B right below it. So this is the B right below middle C. And then, um, I mean, it can go down a little bit further, but G is probably one of the lowest notes you'll find on the treble clef. Now, I have seen some E's and things like that, um, but for today, we're only going to go down to G. Um, so our first ledger line, C, going down is B, sorry, the other way. And then you go down to A, which is two ledger lines um, below the staff on the treble clef. So you can memorize these just like you did um, to memorize middle C. You know, it's on its first ledger line below the staff. This one is two, so this is the A. Um, before that, and then if you go down one more note, this is a space right before that line. That's down here with the G, and then here we go back up. We have G, um, A, B, C, D, and then uh, back up to E to the line. So just know that ledger lines are used to extend the staff, and uh, you can memorize where notes are off of the staff um, if you want, or you can count from notes you do know. Like say you had uh, this first space here below the staff and you didn't know what that was. Well, you could find the closest note you do know, which would probably be this E or middle C. And then you can see that it's right between those two. So you can figure it out that way. But if you want to memorize it, you can memorize that. Obviously, E's the bottom line. D's that space right below that line. C has its own ledger line, the first ledger line below the staff, treble clef. B is right below that in the space uh, right below that line. And then each time we get to a line that's lower, uh, we need to add a ledger line. So we have A there on the second ledger line, and you go down to G. So if you had F, that would be three ledger lines down. Uh, and then you go, you know, you can go back up. I'm just kind of showing you how it goes down. And it goes back up, back to E where we started. Now ledger lines above the treble clef. Uh, let me make sure this is centered okay. Um, so here we have the top line. We know that is F already, and that F is right here uh, because it's two Fs above middle C. The first F above middle C is that first space, and then you have that top line. So that's right here. Now we have the first space above 
the treble clef, and that's the G. You go up one more, that gives you A, another one. The um, second space above the staff is B. Then you have the second line above the staff is C. And then you have three spaces above is D. And then uh, three lines above is E. So you can memorize where each of these are. You can say, okay, I know G is the first space, A, B, C, D, E. Now there's another thing you want to do to make sure you're really solid on these, and I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. But I just want to show you now the bass clef, how the bass clef, the bottom uh, line there is G. We know that. That's two Gs below middle C, because the first G above middle C is that top space. So we have G, and then the first space below the staff is F. The first ledger line on the bass clef is E. Careful, a lot of students will switch this E with middle C. They'll think it's middle C, but careful, that only applies for the treble clef. And then you go down um, to D, the second space below the staff. Um, two lines below the staff is C, and then you can go down further to B, and then D, E, F, G, um, from there. So, just memorize where they are on the staff. G is the bottom line, F is the first space below that, you know, uh, E is the first ledger line. So uh, try to recognize them based on what space or line they're on below the staff or above the staff. Now we have ledger lines that can be above the bass clef. We have A right here. That A is right below middle C because we know this note as middle C. And then the note in between is B, that's the first space. Going past middle C, uh, the second space is D. Second line is E. Second space is F, and then you have G, which is the third line uh, coming uh, back down, as you can see, right, right there. So I will post an image of this um, to uh, a link to it on um, the just in the description of this video. So take a look at that. Now I'm going to show you, um, other than trying to memorize these by looking at it, that doesn't really mean a whole lot to you. Let's practice um, what we've learned. So what you want to do is you want to go to, uh, let me make sure I have this right as well. Um, you can't quite see it on the screen here, but you want to go to uh, musictheory.net slash exercises slash note. Or if you type in note reading exercises, I think into Google, it'll come up as one of the first ones. Um, but, yeah, that's big enough. So you want to first go to... Um, up to the top right corner, there's a, you can barely see it here, there's like a little uh, menu there. You want to go down and you want to, um, oh, click uh, treble range. Well, first you want to, actually, I would do it clef separate first. So you, let's just work on treble clef here. That's where you set your clef, uh, the treble range. Um, you want to pr only practice notes that are you know, maybe like two lines um, below the staff up to that bottom line. So that will just ha get you to practice those, like, um, one, two, three, four, f there's five notes in there. I should have known that was a fifth right away. But there's five notes in there um, between um, the those lines. Uh, as you, oh, okay, you can't see it. Okay. I was worried you couldn't see it first. Uh, but anyway, you select menu, you go to um, tr treble range, there's a main menu here, treble range, you select that, and then you drag down to the areas we were talking about. Instead of doing the ones all in the middle of the staff, which you know all already very well, you just want to practice a few of them, either on the bottom of the treble clef, or top of the treble clef, or bottom of the bass clef, or top of the bass clef. You do it this way, you, you just set the range to be kind of small, but at the bottom of the clef or at the top of the clef. So let's just try this and see how we do. Um, new question. So here's our bottom line. This was within the range we set because it was the bottom line down. You know that that's E, right? There we go. And then the new question is, uh, it's the first ledger line below the staff. Well, you should recognize that one. Um, and if you don't, go back to the um, sheet, take a look and say, oh yeah, okay, that's middle C with um, the treble clef. So you'd hit C, and try to find it where it is on the piano too, that will help you as well. This one is the first space below the uh, staff, and uh, you, if you know that the bottom line is E, the note right before that is D. So you click on D, 
And then you have two lines below the treble clef. We talked about this earlier. You can memorize what that is, or you can count down from E or middle C. And you know that that's A. So um, before going on too long, let me do one more. Uh, that first one below the staff is C again. We know that one. And, and like I said, try to play them on the keyboard. That will help you not only identify them on the staff, but identify them and have a pretty good idea in your head where they're on the keyboard. So, so now that we've, you know, you want to do maybe 20 questions of each of these or 20 examples and go through these um, for, for each part of the clef. Um, so now that we've done the bottom of the treble clef, what do we need to do? Well, logically, I would say move the range you this first note here, and then you want to move the range up to two lines above the treble clef. What that'll do is that will make you practice those five notes in there really well, instead of practicing all the notes in the middle that you already know so well. So you always want to focus down on what the hardest thing is or uh, what you need the most work on. So here we have two lines above the treble clef. You may not have that memorized yet since this is the first lesson we've talked about it, but um, you can memorize that that is C two C's above uh, middle C to be precise um, and that's two ledger lines above the staff so we put C there or you can count from the top line of the staff F you go G A B and then all the way up to C you can count from there that's not as um, efficient I would go with trying to memorize where these are located um, like right away I know that that's a G just because I've been doing this a long time but you could say okay I need to figure this out you can do it by referring to the chart, or you go to the top line that you do know, F, and this is one note above F, how about that? So you just put G, and then here we have two lines, we've talked about this already, that's C right there. So just go through these, and you over time, after studying them for maybe a few days, I suggest maybe you spend, um, I don't know how many minutes it'll take, but do 20 questions on the bottom of the clef, uh, 20, 20 examples, I guess you could say, on the top of the clef and over uh, after a while maybe a week every day you will start to have a much better idea uh, maybe even after only a day some students pick this up really quick you'll have a much better idea on where these notes are located both on the keyboard and on the staff so uh, now that we've done treble clef let's pretend we've done 40 examples we did 20 below the staff 20 above the staff now what do we need to do well you press back here and then you go to clefs and you select bass clef. If you, you can do treble clef and bass clef. It will alternate between the two. Or you can just unselect treble clef to work on the bass clef. That's what I recommend in the beginning. And then the bass range, you want uh, to practice the bottom first. So you want from two lines below the staff up to the bottom line. And then you go back. And then it will start when you click in here. Now our bass clef, it's the first bass below the staff. You can memorize that that's F, or you could count down from G. Uh, either method works pretty well. I would memorize these though. You have G, bottom line, you should know that. Remember, good uh, boys deserve fudge always, or good bunnies deserve fudge always if you've watched my videos. Um, so that's that's G, right here, two G's below, middle C. So we talked about that note also in the lesson. And here we have two spaces below the staff, that's D. And if you, as you can tell, I mean, as I go through these, watch. Uh, that's G, right away, no. I just memorized already, that's C. So I don't have to think about it. Because I've done this very same thing. D. There you go. And I wasn't just doing that to show off. I'm just showing you that that's how effective you want to get at note reading um, above the staff and below the staff. Um, using ledger lines. So now that we did the bottom of the bass clef, let's pretend we did 20 of those. Uh, for time's sake, we won't do that today. But now you want to move to the top of the bass clef from that top line uh, to two line ledger lines above the staff. You go back, you click back into here, and it will do what it, you instructed it to. So if you ever want to change what clef you're working on or what part of the clef you're working on, you click in this weird button here uh, the middle button, you'll see that there's another button on the side you can't quite see. Um, and then you change what the clef you want. Careful, if you select both of them, um, it will randomize it. So here we had the bass clef, that's D. And then the next one's a treble clef. So after you've mastered them separately, put them together, select both, and go through it that way. So that's my pr practice suggestions, but at first, only do the treble clef or the bass clef, and only do a certain portion of 
uh, the clef, like within that ledger line range, two lines below the staff or two lines above the staff, and practice those on their own. And after a while, and practice them finding them on the keyboard as well, and after a while you'll have a much better idea on how this works. Um, so that concludes the lesson for today. Uh, coming back to me, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, go over these ledger lines. I know somebody a while back uh, asked me in the comments if I can make this video, and here it is, uh, all about the ledger lines. Um, do as I say in the video. You may need to watch the video a couple times, which I recommend. Uh, if you're looking for more, you're looking for more practice, you want to get better at reading notes, you want to get better at playing songs, you want to play harder songs, you want to play scales, and all this other stuff, uh, some of which has been covered in the YouTube series, but I want to tell you about my website, LessonsOnTheWeb.com. If you haven't heard me talk about it already, I'd be surprised. Um, but there you can uh, sign up for my Music Academy. Of course, it's optional. Um, it does cost a little money, but uh, take a look into that as there is a lot of content there. So if you've been wondering where all my videos are, that's where they are. I've been making them all along. But putting most of them on this site but I did want to make one about ledger lines because I think that's just kind of general knowledge uh, that people should know but look forward to more YouTube videos there are more coming this year uh, I have some things in mind that I will announce uh, later on but here's today today's lesson on ledger lines so thanks as always for listening and I'll see you for the next lesson thank you